Hey guys, welcome to the video tutorial Create your game with Solaris um, So, so what is Solaris? Um, maybe you've heard about our games um, Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX or XD um, Solaris is the engine of these games and you can use it yourself to make your own games that's why what I'm trying to what I will try to explain in this tutorial um, first of all sorry for my English okay um, let's go download Windows so I'm downloading version uh, 1.2.1 the last digit of the version number is um, just a bug fix version so everything is compatible between 1.2.0, 1.2.1, 1 1 etc. So this tutorial um, exists in French um, since a few months and of course it was missing in English so I'm going to try to do it. In this very first episode um, I will s just explain how to create a new quest with Solarus. Um, okay, it's done. So let's extract the archive I can remove these okay so you have three folders when you download Solaris sample quest is um, <laughs> I guess it's self-explanatory it's a very minimalistic very simple uh, game with only one map just to show you uh, a simple example but in future versions um, uh, we will probably put more stuff in in that game then you have Solaris this is uh, the engine itself itself so it's just an executable file with DLLs necessary to work if you run it it doesn't do anything because there is no game, there is no quest. Oops. Okay. I moved everything one folder above. And the last folder is Solaris Quest Editor. We are gonna use this one, this editor to create the game, to create the maps. Um, so you need um, Java uh, version 7 to run the editor. So once the editor is open, um, quest, new quest. Here you have to choose the directory where to create the game, the quest. Okay. And it, it says quest successfully created. The next step is to manually edit your quest properties in quest dot that um, because some things um, are not handled by the editor yet graphically. I mean, and you have to edit a few text files by hand. Okay, I'm gonna close the editor for now and here there is a data folder that appeared when I created the quest so the quest is here and now if you run Solaris it detects the data folder here so um, this quest just created does not do a lot of things <laughs> There is simply the Solaris logo here and a black screen. But you have just created a quest. Congratulations! 
So, the first thing you want to do is, like the editor said, edit this file, quest. So, it's a data, it's a data file. I'm using notepad++ plus plus. Um, This file contains a few properties of your quest. The first one being the version of Solaris um, your quest is compat compatible with. Like I said before, um, only the first two digits are significant for um, compatibility issues. So what I'm saying in this tutorial is for Solaris 1.2, but at least in this chapter, I don't think it's going to change much in future versions. So you should be okay to follow this tutorial even with um, some future versions that are not released yet at the time um, I am recording the video. Okay, so 1.2. Um, right here, this is necessary to enable the save game system. We will see that in the next episode. And um, what we can change right now is the title bar. So let's let's try to change that. I don't know if you noticed, but this was uh, the title of your of the window. Okay, a game wa made with Solaris. Edit quest that to change this title. Um, okay, so why don't we say my great project or quest okay save it works so just a small uh, remark this data file and all data files actually uh, should be encoded in UTF-8 so if you're making your game in English uh, ASCII works too but if you are French or uh, <laughs> if you make several languages with special characters um, you should use UTF-8 always Okay. Mm. So we have my great quest. By the way, the Solaris logo that you see at the start, at the beginning of the game, is not something built in in the engine. It is in your quest, so you can remove it if you want. But you can also leave it leave it here to show to your players that you are using Solaris. Okay, mm, the next thing I we want to do is we will try to just add uh, something instead of this black screen. We are gonna show a picture. Okay. So if you read the description of the video. Um, there is a link to an archive that you can download. In this archive you have a sprite directory and an, uh, this picture. <laughs> we will we will try to show it in our black screen, okay? Challenge accepted. So, take the challenge accepted picture and put it in the sprites directory of your quest. All images should be in the sprites directory. Okay, so now the uh, picture is in the quest, and of course we have to show it. So take the um, edit main dot lua. This is the main script of your quest. Quests are scripted with the lua programming language. Um, if you don't like programming, I suggest to use uh, something else, <laughs> like um, Game Creator, Multimedia Fusion, um, 
because I I made Solaris uh, precisely to be able to to use a programming language to define the logic of your, of the quest. Okay, so you don't have to know everything about Lua uh, to follow these tutorials, but I assume that you have uh, some kind of background in programming. You know what is a, a variable, a function. So when um, your game starts, the engine Solarus, so um, Solarus.exe, calls automatically this function, um, sol.main, um, unstarted, if it exists. So this is executed. We first make a few things and then show um, the Solaris logo. So if you don't want to show it, you can remove that. And what we want to do is uh, show the picture after the logo. So when the logo is finished, this function will be executed. So we will use a boolean variable um, show um, title um, show challenge accepted true let's initialize this to false um, in Lua to create a variable you have to use the keyword local otherwise it will be global to the entire program the entire quest don't do that unless you exactly know what you're doing okay show challenge accepted true um, no false initially <laughs> um, there is an another function Lua function automatically called by the engine when it exists on draw it is called at each frame of your game with a parameter screen that represents the image drawn on your screen um, first we have to load the picture challenge accepted image to create an image sol.surface.create and the file name relative to the sprites directory um, challenge accepted okay and then you can show your you can take your picture and draw it on the screen at each frame but only when um, this boolean is true otherwise you will see it even during the Solaris logo okay I think this sh should work Let's try. Yeah! Challenge accepted! Okay. Um, so, how can you know everything about this? This, so the name of the, f of the function that exists. There is a full documentation um, right here. Lua API okay so there are a lot of modules audio video files um, timers map etc um, for example general features here you have um, all events and functions of sol.main actually all modules have um, some functions and some events. Um, wh what we call functions are functions of the engine 
that you call from Lua code and events are the contrary functions of your own code Lua code called by the engine so uh, this one is a, a function of the engine that you call this one is your own function that the engine calls okay so it works both ways and um, surface here you have the function we just used surface create first parameter file name and um, also yes surfaces are particular drawable objects so in drawable objects you have the function draw this one we are using it here draw screen and as you see there are two optional parameters um, to define the destination coordinates so why don't we try to add them screen okay challenge accepted so it works um, I think I'm gonna stop for this episode and in the next one we will try to run a game on a simple map and have uh, and have the hero and you can move it you will be able to move it okay um, thank you for watching and see you next time